Okay, in this step we're going to get the rotor, which is this part, uh, ready to install permanently into our crow box. Um, so we'll need to have the rotor. We're going to use hot glue in this step, so have that ready. And we'll also need a couple things out of this little bag of accessories that comes with the servo motor. Um, the main part that we'll need is this six-pointed horn. Um, we'll just put that there. And then we need one small part out of here. You'll notice that the servo kit comes with a lot of different kinds of fasteners, little rivets and small pointy screws. What we're looking for is the one little bolt or screw that looks like this. And um, so we need that part and none of the others. So these are for other applications. Let's just get rid of those. But this is what we ended up with, is a little uh, three millimeter screw with a flat end. So the first thing we need to do is, um, you'll notice on the back of the uh, rotor, the hub actually has a recess in the same shape as this servo horn. And we just want to click that in there. And before you do that, we should talk about the horn. Notice that um, there's a flat side to it, and then there's a side that has a little hub. And uh, you want the hub facing out uh, as you push this in to your into your um, rotor, into the recess here. Now, um, in this case, I got a pretty perfect fit, but sometimes um, there will be little imperfections on these servo horns um, from the mold and other manufacturing sort of artifacts. So if you have a little extra uh, nub or edge or anything that sticks out that makes it so that your hub, or sorry, your, your servo horn doesn't fit this hub uh, flat and tight, then take the horn back out and uh, just use a hobby knife to shave away the imperfections. Um, so now all we need to do is we're just going to use some hot glue to uh, join these together. And uh, there's no real science to it. Just going to kind of apply a good ring of hot glue here all the way around the hub and the horn holding that in place. That's really all you need to do there is um, just put enough uh, hot glue on here so that the, uh, that the uh, horn is secured to the rotor hub. And if you want, you can actually go around the outside here too, just where the points are sticking out, out of, the, out of that first ring of hot glue that I put on, and uh, make sure that those get saturated as well. If you want to make sure that your horn never pops off. So that, I feel, is going to be pretty secure. So now uh, I'm just going to set this down flat, as flat as I can. A little roll of tape seems about perfect to offset the, uh, the height of the, uh, the rotor push pin there. And now we're just going to give this a few minutes to um, cool down and uh, harden, and then we'll move on. All right, we can see that the hot glue has had enough time to uh, cool down and harden up. So now we have a rotor which has a servo horn secured to it. Uh, and that's what is going to allow us to connect our rotor directly to the servo. So let's see, I'm going to carefully put aside that servo screw that we talked about. And we're going to get our crow box with electronics. Put that right here. Okay, so uh, we have given our rotor plenty of time to uh, have that hot glue set up, uh, which will hold the uh, servo horn um, securely in the, in the rotor hub. Uh, you can see I have here my crow box, just as yours probably is. Uh, the wiring is done. Um, the sled is still halfway out of the machine, and um, that's appropriate for where we are because um, once we get the, lid in, uh, the rotor installed, um, we can then install the lid of the machine and then we can begin to test uh, all of the features to make sure they work the way we want um, before we put the sled all the way into the machine because if we need to change anything about our wiring we'll be happy that we left this hanging out the way we have. So um, let's see, uh, the uh, Arduino has been programmed with the Crow S operating system software um, and we're going to fire this one up for the first time. And uh, what happens when you first fire up the crow box is the servo has to park, um, which means that the servo here is going to make some noise and spin, and there's going to be a decent amount of activity um, from the servo. 
and what we want to do is wait until the servo stops moving completely and then we'll be able to put the um, the rotor in place. So I'm going to go ahead and power up this crow box by plugging it in. And here comes the servo activity we talked about. Okay, now that the servo has stopped completely, this means that the, uh, that the uh, sliding lid would be parked open like this, allowing access to the food. So now that we know that, we know that the rotor push pin, which is this part here, needs to be towards the back of the machine. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the hub and um, this little toothy part of it here and position that right over the spline of the servo. And then we want the push pin as close as we can get it to the back wall of the machine. Um, if you can't get yours sort of in a straight line towards the back like I have here, uh, it just means that your servo uh, spline and the hub are aligned slightly differently. And uh, what you would do in that case is just give it a gentle turn clockwise until it does seat uh, on, the, on the servo horn or the servo spline. In this case, mine's pretty, um, pretty straight toward the back, so I'm just going to go ahead and hold the servo from the bottom with this hand um, and gently push the rotor down just like that. Um, we were going to install this little screw here to hold things together. Uh, in my case, this screw was defective um, and actually lifted the rotor back off the spline. Um, so uh, we're going to skip that part. We're not going to install that screw, but it's okay. Most of the crow boxes I've built, um, I've done without that screw. So we're just going to proceed and uh, we're going to go ahead and put the sliding lid on just like this. So uh, I'm going to put this uh, far side here into the permanent rails and then uh, I'm going to take my uh, removable rail here. Um, remember the notched side to the back of the machine. I'm just going to set that in place for now and I've got these little uh, three millimeter screws that I'm going to use to put that in place. So I'm going to push this bolt through this side and again, uh, I actually just hold the driver bit in my hand because I don't my my screwdriver doesn't fit in this small space here. And I just want to get these threaded first and then get them tighter. Now with those bolts tightened, my uh, sliding lid is now in permanently installed. Well, permanently unless we remove this uh, rail and take it out again. So I'm going to push this reset button here on the Arduino, which is located right near this um, USB connector. Uh, and that's going to reboot the crow box, and we're going to hear a bunch of servo activity, but this time, because our rotor and our lid are installed, we're going to uh, see the lid move. There we go. So uh, everything's working well here. Um, I should say that if um, for some reason when you powered up your um, your Crowbox you didn't get servo activity, um, you will need to go over your wiring and check that against the um, the uh, information in the wiring guide, which is on the Crowbox website. Um, you can also come to the forum, the Google group, and uh, look for help there. We'd be happy to help you. Um, but assuming that everything uh, has functioned the way that I've just demonstrated, um, you're ready to um, do a functionality test. We're going to test the four phases of uh, Crowbox behavior, the Crowbox itself, um, and make sure that all four phases work properly. That means that we know when birds land on the perch. That means we can detect coins being um, deposited. And once we um, finish those tests, if everything goes well, 
we'll uh, get this um, the electronics put in and the lids put on and uh, we'll finalize our uh, crowbox assembly.